Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It is starting to heat up in uh, Iran. Let's take a look at some information we have to share with you today. A slew of news stories are coming out today already after the killing of uh, General uh, Sol uh, Soleimani out of uh, Iran. He was killed in Iraq by an authorized airstrike by the President of the United States. Uh, now there are threats coming out of an attack on the White House. There are uh, threats that there's going to be a major war and a major battle. And this red flag that you see being hoisted right now in Iran is being hoisted over one of the um, one of the mosques there in Iran, and it's actually being hoisted over the mosque that the Shiite Muslims say the 12th Imam will come out of and announces the return of the 12th Imam, which is the Mahdi. Uh, I asked uh, our Middle East correspondent, what does this red flag really mean? And, it's, and I was responded back, it means a severe battle is coming. Uh, those who want to avenge the blood of Hussein uh, and this is, of course, a general that was killed. This is why this flag has been raised. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at other things that are going on in the uh, in the world right now in relations to this situation. And before I do, uh, like I said, a lot of things are going on. The British are uh, speaking about, they're, they're already sending their ships over to the region. It seems to be that a war will be inevitable with Iran. That is something that they have wanted to do to bring about this new world order that they're talking about. And uh, But I wanted to play for you. This is in 2011, what uh, President Trump, as he weighed in on Barack Obama's uh, possibility of going to war with Iran, I want you to see how then Donald Trump was uh, speaking about Iran. Listen to this just for a moment. One second, let me get the volume all of this up. I don't know how I ended up. Okay, we just got to go backwards again. Get past that. Okay. Volumes are all up. We'll Our president will start a war. One second. And now he was saying here that the president, he's talking about Barack Obama, that he is going to start a war on Iran. But I want you to see how then he was speaking about Iran. And then, of course, we'll look at the decisions he's made that has shocked Pentagon officials, according to report. But let's look and see what he says then. Our president will start a war with Iran because he has absolutely no ability to negotiate. He's weak and he's ineffective. So the only way he figures that he's going to get reelected, and as sure as you're sitting there, is to start a war with Iran. Now, I'm more militant and more militaristic than the president. I believe in strength. But to start a war in order to get elected, and I believe that's going to happen, would be an outrage. Iran can... Think about it yourself. To start a war to get elected is an outrage. Uh, there's a lot more. I'll include the link in this for you so you can look at this as well. Uh, but let's take a look at the things that are actually happening uh, that is going on right now. The Iranian MP has threatened to attack the White House. Uh, that is what's coming down right now, uh, the threat to, to attack the White House, and sometimes these things just do not want to work. Uh, and, and of course, as we look at some of the things in this article right here, Iranian MP Abolafazi Abutarabi has reportedly threatened to attack the White House in response to a message from President Trump that promised severe consequences if the Islamic nation escalates hostilities with the U.S. Uh, Trump warns Iran, uh, U.S. has targeted 52 Iranian sites and will hit very fast and very hard if needed. Now that 52 sites is just not anything pulled out of the hat and of course the president no doubt being uh, uh, coached by whoever is pushing him to do this war with Iran, that this is for the 52 hostage, hostages that were uh, held for 444 days uh, back years ago. We'll go into that in just a little bit here. But this attack on the White House, does this not remind you uh, of some of these movie clips here that we could look at that uh, clearly uh, 
has been conditioning uh, for us uh, to go into to, to have this type of a situation in Washington D.C. And I can tell you now, whether it be on the Capitol, whether it be on the White House, uh, or, or you know the president's residence, etc., as the two movies depict the different different scenarios there. Uh, it will galvanize America just like 9-11 galvanized this country to go behind President Bush to start the so-called uh, war on terror. Uh, so that's what I find interesting about these uh, movies here. Uh, something that, you know, Yana would certainly concur with as well. And so I wanted to just share with you just as a reminder uh, these trailers here depicting the attack here on the nation and uh, this is of course with uh, the Iranian uh, MP making that type of a statement if they do not carry it out themselves I would not be a bit surprised of a staged event that would make it look like Iranians have attacked our nation very much like 9-11 9-11 an inside job 9-11 something that the Mossad was standing there jumping up and down and celebrating uh, as our ten, the Twin Towers were struck recording they were they were taken into custody they were questioned but uh, very discreet Discreetly, they were snuck back into Israel. So these are the type of things that we are noting ourselves, looking at, and realize that uh, so many of these events are staged, and I can only imagine what's coming next. So Trump threatens the attack of 52 sites in Iran. As I said, it's not just anything that he's saying here. Uh, right here, President Donald Trump on Saturday warned Iran that if it retaliates for the killing of one of its top leaders, in other words, we can kill your top leader, but you don't do anything about it because we're America. We're the great warrior. We fight for God. Well, that's what these uh, so-called uh, uh, false prophets are telling you on these uh, television series like Sid Ross just put out one. He had three of his false prophets on there that are all sitting there telling you uh, that, you know, you need to stand behind the president. Forget his past. Don't worry about what he's done. Uh, I would say, well, what about what he's doing now? A lot of people don't even pay attention to that, but that's okay. President Donald Trump on Saturday warned Iran that it will re it retaliates for the killing of one of its top leaders, General Qasami Soleimani. Soleimani. It will face U.S. attacks on 52 targets. The number he said was symbolic. The president tweeted that the, the number of targets matched the number of hostages held by Iran in 1979 when 52 American diplomats and citizens were held uh, for 444 days. All right, so moving along also, the Iraqi parliament passes a resolution asking for the government to cancel requests for assistance from U.S. coalition. This is the reason why I was telling you already. I do believe that if that happens, uh, that will that will basically put the United States not only dealing with uh, Iran, but with Iraq as well. Now, the U.S. has military forces in Iraq, so it will make it a little bit harder for the Iraqis to pull something like this off without creating another internal war in the nation. Uh, but the solidarity of the people may end up really coming behind uh, the Iranians uh, and, and fighting for that purpose there. Also, I wanted to share with you this here from Ariel Gold. Uh, she uh, put, posted this on her Twitter feed there. Ariel Gold really is, uh, she's a Jewish woman, and I really applaud a lot of her stance for the Syrian people. She does a lot of work on the Syrians and, and a lot of other places there. The way that they are expressing themselves. And let's just look at this right here. This are the Iranians in the parliament. They're all saying death to America. Iranian lawmakers chanting death. This is really created uh, a major problem for us militarily. This is basically the actions of the president has certainly put us in a situation to where the war is inevitable at this point. And my great concern as well is that Israel is going to get struck in the process of this. I would not be a bit surprised about Tel Aviv. Uh, I was sitting there, I was talking to uh, Dr. Rosa this morning. Also, I had uh, spoke uh, by text yesterday with uh, Brother Gary Lowry. Gary, who also had seen the vision that uh, Haifa would come under a an attack by a, a weapon similar to that of an atomic bomb. Uh, I can't remember exactly how 
that prophecy that Gary, that he had. But what really struck me though this morning, and I did not ask Sister Rosa or Dr. Rosa if I could share this, uh, but I trust it would be okay. She had a dream not too long ago. President Trump was sitting uh, at his desk in, in the White House there with a huge snake sitting on his shoulders and whispering in his ear. Well, I guess it doesn't take a rocket scientist uh, for anybody to figure that one out, right? So, so much for these uh, false prophets talking about how great he is. You have believers that are seeing these types of visions. And of course, Yeshua, Jesus himself said that the Pharisees were what? Serpents, seed of vipers. Ay, ay, ay. And we talk about airing this on Fact News Network. Might have to play this one down on uh, Israeli News Live instead. Anyway, huge breaking news. Iranian regime offers $80 million for President Trump's head. That's going overboard as well. You know, uh, listen. I believe in equality and I believe in peace. I, I want to see peace in the Middle East, not all these wars and stuff. And so, you know, the way Iran is reacting... I understand their reaction because their top general has been killed uh, intentionally by a strike by the president of the United States. In fact, it was a strike we'll talk about in a moment, how the Pentagon was not for this strike. But that is very concerning to me that uh, the Iranian government is offering an $80 million bounty on the, on the head of President Trump. It's, it's definitely fueling the flames and it's not going to get any better. It's not going to get any better. Uh, but then again, neither will Trump do any better either. He is certainly, he has the serpent speaking into his ear, telling him what to do, and he's going to do exactly what that snake has to say there. Uh, this article here, uh, and, and several of these articles too, I want to thank Dr. Rosa. She really uh, helps me, sends me a lot of uh, information, and so I do appreciate that tremendously, what she does there. Um, Anyway, this is just showing that the uh, Navy Admiral of the of the British military, and it's not going to allow me to pull that up there, but they are actually, uh, I can do this off the telegraph as well, Royal Navy deployed to protect the British ships in the Gulf in the wake of Kasami Salami's assassination. Uh, the Star is talking about how that uh, uh, the, the, the top, uh, uh, top man there in uh, Britain, let me see if it'll pull back up so it's yeah, just not wanting to do it. Uh, maybe we'll get it this time. I'd like to share that with you. I don't want to just say it from my own words there. Uh, my highlights are not there anymore. Anyway, but anyway, Britain must be ready, it says here, for a looming Iran war, warns Royal Navy Admiral. Now, the, the Navy Admiral there, the Royal Navy Admiral, Admiral had said the United States is connected at the hip. He also spoke about uh, that uh, Iran considers America the great Satan and Britain the little Satan. So, and, and you know, granted, whether it be the President of the United States, whether it be the Great, great Britain, uh, the, the, the Navy Admiral there, there are certainly now real threats that, that can certainly transpire, uh, whether, I wouldn't think as much on American soil as it would be overseas, but the retaliation is definitely very real after the president has taken the steps that he has taken. And let me just see, this is the one I wanted to bring up on, on the reason why. Uh, this is on Chicago Tribune. As tensions with Iran escalated, Trump opted for an extreme measure. Pentagon officials were stunned. Now, the bad thing is, though, they, they are stunned about it, but they're the guys that give him the option. In the chaotic days leading to the death of Major General Kasami Soleimani, Iran's most powerful commander, top American military officials put the option of killing him, which they viewed as the most extreme response to the recent Iranian-led violence in Iraq on the menu they presented to President Donald Trump. They didn't think he would take it. In the wars waged in September 11, 2001, attacks Pentagon officials have often offered improbable options to presidents to make other possibilities appear more palatable. But after initially rejecting the Soleimani option on December 28th and authorizing airstrikes on Iranian-backed Shiite militias groups instead, a few days later, Trump watched fuming as television reports showed Iranian-backed attacks uh, on the U.S. embassies, is what it's going to say there, in Baghdad. According to Defense Department and administration officials, by late Thursday, the president had gone for the extreme option. Top Pentagon officials were stunned. You know, this is what gets me, because one of those Pentagon officials that is involved in this 
group right here had shared with me months ago and even asked me to put it out for you guys that Iran had technology that the United States cannot mitigate. And that he said he felt like that we are getting in over our heads with Iran. Iran's ally is China and the technology that they had, they had acquired from China. And he said, we cannot mitigate that. This is one of the reasons, if you remember, over on Israeli News Live, we, had, we were talking there about how that they would not bring the U.S. ships, the, the USS Lincoln, into the Persian Gulf for fear of what Iran could do. And now we're talking about getting in an all-out war with them. Well, we have certainly started the green light.